Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, June 26, 2013. We begin with news from the world of physics. A group over at the University of Texas have had a breakthrough in the development of tabletop scale particle accelerators. Now these are no large hadron colliders. They aren't meant to be. But they recently achieved bringing electrons to energy levels of 2 giga electron volt, twice the threshold of previous small accelerators. Still, these devices could potentially replace entire facilities and give more scientists access to these highly energetic particles. It uses a method called plasma pulse acceleration, which on the surface is relatively simple. Basically, a tiny puff of gas is hit with a high-energy laser, turning it into an ionized plasma. This results in around half a billion electrons separating from the gas and being accelerated by the laser to these high-energy levels in around an inch of distance. Plasma pulse accelerators have been worked on since the 90s, but this group had access to the Texas Petawatt Laser, one of the most powerful in the world. Currently, and in the future, such small accelerators may be used for the generation of high-energy and short timescale X-ray pulses from these accelerated electrons. Again, replacing large facilities, such X-ray pulses are useful in a wide variety of imaging techniques for physics, chemistry, and biology. The group will continue to develop this technology and estimate they will have 10 giga electron volt accelerators within a few years. Allowing many more scientists to have access to these particles and x-rays could greatly accelerate all kinds of research, as well as making such devices more affordable for labs around the world. Our next story comes from the world of medicine. Researchers at Virginia Commonwealth University have been developing a gene therapy to eliminate cancer with some encouraging results. As we have discussed before, current treatments for cancer aren't the best. Even when they are successful at curing a person, they often have very serious side effects, and there are already certain cancers that are resistant to conventional drugs. One researcher from this group originally cloned a human gene that had multiple roles. It is involved in the development of blood vessels, but more importantly directly relates to cell suicide, and also promotes the destruction of cancer in the immune system. So the idea was to deliver this gene right into cancer cells while leaving healthy cells alone. Working with multiple adenovirus vectors, they showed several successful tests using the IL-24 gene. It selectively infected and destroyed breast cancer stem cells in a petri dish while ignoring normal breast stem cells. In mouse models, it greatly inhibited tumor growth based on cancer stem cells, both primary and secondary tumors injected throughout the body. And a phase 1 human trial has shown that this kind of therapy is at least safe. The researchers have also been refining the delivery virus itself, creating a so-called cancer terminator vector that specifically replicates in cancer cells. This is interesting because for safety reasons some gene therapy vectors have replication disabled altogether, but allowing it to specifically replicate should make treatment more effective. Although current work has been done with breast cancer cells, the researchers believe it could be effective in a wide variety of cancer types. Next is further research on the IL-24 gene and delivery methods, hopefully with further human trials in the future. And last is an update from the world of chemistry, specifically as it applies to abiogenesis. While there are many plausible ideas in science for the origins of life, there are still many details that need to be worked out. One of these details may have been discovered by scientists from one of the Max Planck Institutes working with international collaborators. For almost 50 years, scientists have known that exposing hydrogen cyanide to UV radiation could spontaneously generate more complex organic compounds. In particular, compounds that are an important intermediate to nucleotide formation in a lifeless environment. But as with many things in abiogenesis, the details of this process weren't known. Because the various stages of the hydrogen cyanide reaction were so short-lived, the scientists relied heavily on computational modeling while comparing it to previous experimental results. Surprisingly, they found the process was not favored by temperature, but instead relied on UV radiation to excite the electrons within the molecule. They also found that energy dissipation made the reaction extremely inefficient but definitely possible. These details about the reaction mean that hydrogen cyanide polymerization could happen within comets or terrestrial ice. Although it's only one part of our complex origin, it does bring us a step closer to understanding how life first formed on this planet and theoretically others. 
Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. In reference to our first story, what piece of scientific equipment would you like miniaturized and why? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.